Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need so they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice while learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on this journeys and share in the farmers' experiences on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Hello and welcome to Shamba Shape Up. This week we are in Bungoma County. It's one of the counties that grows maize in our country. And we are visiting farmers who've taken insurance on their maize. Maize is a very important crop, so it's very important to have good quality seeds, good management skills to get a very, very good yield. Oh yes, let's go meet them. But before that, Tony, this maize has to be milled. All right. When we mill the maize, let's meet our farmers Mary and Julius. They have one acre and they plant maize, bananas, popo, vegetables, and they also keep chicken and cows. Speaking of cows, this cow shed looks like it could really use a makeover. They also run a small shop where they sell some of their farm produce. I decided to do farming because I knew that I will have my foods for my family and also if it is extra I'll have to sell so that I get some finance to assist my family. Let's go meet them. Ah, Julius! <laughs> Welcome, Karo! Thank you, Karo! Thank you, Karo. Thank, you, Karo. Thank, you. Thank you so much! We are what very happy to be carrying this basket? Ah, let me tell you. Yes. So here I'm carrying some flour. Well, what, what, do you call this, what do you call this style of curry? We call it situbi in our... Situbi. Yes. Sikono. 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 Yes. So I have been sikono and situbi. Situbi. Yes. yes. All the same. <laughs> They're all the same. <laughs> all the same. Okay, all right. mm -hmm. So, Karo, what are you carrying there? Uh, I'm carrying some flour to make Ugadi, you know, Tony gets hungry. Yeah. So now we are here, and I'm sure uh, just like any other farm, you do have challenges. Of course we have challenges as farmers. Yes. Mm -hmm. We normally have uh, armyworm. Uh -huh. okay. When you plant, after one month, they start eating the, the maize. So your okay. maize production is not doing well. It's not doing well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my Mary, I'll come to you again. Uh, they say that women are the ones who hold the home together. Yes. Mm -hmm. So in terms of money planning, what challenges are you facing or how do you go about it? According to many challenges, mm. uh, I normally lack finance because I have so many challenges concerning school fees. You need All good right. planning. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so when you see Shamba Shape Up, you know we've come with experts who are going to make sure that by the end of the time we're with you, you're fully shaped up. Mm -hmm. Thank yes. you, madam. Yeah. Thank you, Tony. Mm -hmm. As they pitch the tent, I'm going to keep my unka there. Mm -hmm. Then. Let's work. All right, all right. Let's go. Show us, show us, show us. Show us. I am Shikonod. Let me see Shikonod. I am Shikonod. Okay. You see? Maize farming can be challenging, especially as we see new diseases. Maize lethal necrosis disease, also known as MLND, is a disease that affects maize, leaving the maize leaves yellow or dry, and they're often short stems. Winket from Plant Village is here to tell us how farmers can prevent maize lethal necrosis on their maize. Maize uh, lethal necrosis disease, it's a viral disease. Some of the symptoms of uh, this uh, disease, you find that uh, the maize starts to yellow. And also the maize cob, the feeling of the grains is very poor. And also the maize cob will uh, start to rot. And also, uh, you'll find that there will be no production of uh, pollen grains in the field. Those are some of the symptoms of the MLND. Mm -hmm. yeah. So w when it comes to the harvest, how bad is MLND when it comes to production? you find that uh, the harvest of that uh, field will be poor. Uh, by poor, I mean you'll just get the 50%. You'll not get the 100% yield of the maize. Yes. Yeah. How is it this is spread to other farm? For example, if you uh, use the equipment in a field which is infected with the maize, then use the same equipment 
before cleaning it uh, in another field, you're going to spread that disease. Another way is that uh, the seeds you're using, if those seeds are uh, already infected with the disease, if you pl you're going to plant them in the field, they're going to spread the disease. And uh, the other one is uh, through some of the insects, like the aphids. Through their movement from one plant to the other in the field, they are going to spread the disease. Those are the three major ways of spreading the disease. Julius, yes. what do farmers here do to control MLND? Here in my area, they are brood and they burn. Does the disease go? No. It still comes back? It comes back after the second season. What should farmers do to control MLND? The ways of uh, preventing this disease, uh, first, you have uh, to use uh, certified seeds which are tolerant to this MLND disease. Then the next thing you do is that uh, after using like the jembe in the field, you make sure that you disinfect them before going to another field. Why is that? Why is that? Because uh, you can get some debris of uh, the disease, of which if uh, the debris are left in the jembe and use it in another farm, you, you are like uh, transferring that disease uh, to, to that field and to that maize in that area. So how should farmers clean them? Uh, one way of cleaning those equipment, you can use some uh, disinfectant. You can use it to wipe uh, the, the jembe. Yeah. Yeah. You make sure your jembe is clean or your panga is clean. Uh -huh. yeah. Wash your farm tools with water mixed with disinfectant that kills germs and viruses. Also, make sure to remove any soil from your tools so you don't spread the disease in your farm. Can I soak these tools over the night before I use it by the next day? Is it possible? Okay, you can soak your, your equipment uh, overnight in, in the water so that you can make sure that uh, the remains of the soils are removed from those equipment. Another way is uh, when you're monitoring your field each and every day, if uh, there is a maize which is infected with the MLND, you approach the infected uh, plant and uh, either burning it or uh, burying it away from that field. Another way is that uh, you make sure your field is always uh, clean. The weeds in the field, they can uh, act as a host for some of the insects which transfer uh, the disease. You keep on doing the weeding of your field to avoid those insects being on those weeds. When Kate went on to explain that it is also important to rotate your crop every season in order to stop MLND. Rotate between different crop families, such as legumes and potatoes, before planting maize again. If Julius does all this, he can better manage MLND and get a better harvest. While Tony was helping on the MLND, the team decided to shape up Julius's cow shed. That floor doesn't look hygienic at all. Planning ahead of the season gives a farmer peace of mind. However, when a farmer does not plan early and save money for the next season, it can be difficult to get together enough money for much needed inputs. We have invited Catherine, a financial expert, to help us understand why it is important to plan early for the next season and how to do this in an easy way. So you talked about these challenges that you've been having. Maybe if you could tell us so that Catherine here can get to hear from the horse's mouth. What, some, what challenges do you face? Some of the challenges are uh, maybe you can prepare yourself very early, in, that you are going to plant very early. Mm. But when it comes time, you don't have seeds because of cash. Mm -hmm. You just delay and you see that you cannot have it the way you have arranged yourself. In a couple of weeks' time, once her maze has reached knee height, Mary will have to top dress with a fertilizer such as CAN. So now when the time comes for top dressing and, and there, is, there is no fertilizer to do it, sometimes you forego. You forego and even the plants cannot do well. Mm -hmm. My question is, uh, in the beginning of the season, there are plants that farmers make. So do you make your plants at the beginning of the season or like you said, when you need to top dress, when do you plan for this? I buy the seeds. Then I try to look for money for now to tracing. Like now I have not even got the money. So, Catherine. Yes, Karu. You are an expert on financial planning. Yes. Yes. 
tell us what is financial planning and why is it important? Okay, financial planning is whereby somebody is supposed to plan how she is going to spend each and every coin that she is going to acquire from the businesses that she is venturing in. If you plan with your finances, you have that peace of mind in case something happens from nowhere, you are able to sort it without having any headache. So, for how much do you buy the CAN? I used to buy 3800 but now it has hiked the price. And you said you use two bags? Two bags. I normally use two bags. Two bags. So if you round it off, that's about 14,000? Yeah, 14,000. 14, so Mama Mary, yes, you madam. have 14,000 ready. I don't have, that is why the delay is there, madam. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to advise her on how she can raise the 14,000 within a period of one month. Mm -hmm. So first of all, Mary, you are supposed to open a saving account where you will be keeping your money for that money to be safe. So to raise the 14,000 in a month, we'll take the 14,000, we divide with the number of days in a month. Okay. So in a day, Mary will be required to save 467 bob. Mm -hmm. And this money, you are saving it from the other sources of income that you normally have. Mary makes money from selling bananas and vegetables in her shop, which gives her about 500 shillings a day. She and her husband make another 300 shillings from selling milk. Put together, that's 800 shillings a day, of which just over half can go towards saving for the top dressing fertilizer that is needed. What other advice does Catherine have for Mary? One thing Mary is supposed to be sure, the next season for planting starts at what time? She is she supposed to be specific on the month that she is supposed to plan. And once she knows about the season, she is now supposed to come up with a budget on what she needs for that particular season. Like for example, she will need fertilizers, she will need the seedlings, mm -hmm. and everything that she will be required to use in that particular that season. That includes also labor. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to advise you is that after every harvest, ensure you save money for the next season. Because yes. you might harvest today, and if you use that, the whole of that money that you have gotten from your products, you will find yourself struggling for the next season. Thank you, Matt. Mm -hmm. Once Mary sticks to this plan, she will always have enough money to get through the next planting season. Catherine has one last surprise for our farmer. She's brought the CAN fertilizer that is needed. Hey, thank you very much. <laughs> Can we go and pick Let's it? go and see it. She's so excited. <laughs> Once Mary's maize is knee height, it's time to top dress. Mary needs to sprinkle 10 grams or a bottle cap of fertilizer in a circle around each plant, 15 centimeters away from the crop and cover lightly with soil. She'll need to do this when the soil is a little moist and make sure the fertilizer does not touch the maize plant. Thanks to the recent subsidies for fertilizers, the price of CAN is back to normal. Put a little bit of flour. So, Karo, you're actually serious you're going to cook ugali? But I'm doing it, Tony. Wow, so how can I help, Karo? Uh, Prepare the veggies. More to come right after the break. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. We are in Luuya village, Bungoma County, and we are visiting Julius and Mary. We've seen how to prevent maize lethal necrosis disease and how planning early for the season can give farmers a financial leg up when the season begins. We also want to find out all about parasitoids and why crop insurance can really support farmers in a bad situation. Without wasting any time? We eat first, then go to work. Tony, you've not finished preparing the veggies. Oh, oh yeah, right. Fall armyworm is a major challenge for farmers across Kenya. Farmers have tried using pesticides and other traditional ways to manage this pest. Plant Village, together with Dream Team Agro Consultancy Limited and ICPE, 
have come up with a biological way of managing fall armyworm. And today we have Franklin to tell us more about how parasitoids can be used to manage this pest. But first, what are parasitoids? We use parasitoids, which are the parasites that kill the fall armyworm eggs, preventing the egg from reaching the larval stage, which is the, the destructive stage. Take us step by step on how this works. Okay, a parasitoid is an, a wasp or a fly that needs fall armyworm eggs so that it survives. So it kills the fall armyworm eggs by laying its eggs inside the fall armyworm eggs. So it needs that to reproduce so that it survives, ultimately killing the fall armyworm egg. And as a result, reducing the population of the what? Fall armyworm. Yes. Mm. So what you introduce to the fall armyworm eggs kill, kills the eggs yes. and make sure they don't hatch. Yes. And that reduces the population of the fall armyworm uh -huh. and increases the population of the friendly ah, wasp now. The ones that we need in the shamba, yes. the population increases. Yes. The ones that we don't need, is suppressed we now. We eradicate. Okay. So if more eggs are laid, the, the friendly wasp, the parasite, does what? Kills the eggs. It okay? keeps killing and it killing. It keeps killing additional eggs. Parasitoids are wasps or flies that lay their eggs in the fall armyworm eggs, thereby stopping the fall armyworm from growing. So, by introducing these friendly wasps, you bring a natural enemy to the fall armyworm. Now, this parasitoid does not only kill fall armyworm, but it kills all those caterpillars that belong to the same class as fall armyworm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it can be used for all the cereals that are attacked by fall armyworm. Yes. How do we use this? So what we have here is the egg card that contains the parasitoids. So this is the card. Wow. This is the card, you can see. These are the parasitoids. So we, this card has approximately 10,000 to 12,000 parasitoids. Okay? So we release these parasitoids at two to three weeks, maize. But we have to first of all scout for the egg masses of the fall armyworm or the presence of the female moths so that we be sure that once we release these parasitoids in that field they will be able to find the host and they will establish. So for an acre averagely we, we release six of these cards that is 60,000 parasitoids. The best time to release is early in the morning because the parasitoids most of the time they emerge early in the morning and they are very active in the morning. So we release this when it's not raining, that's early in the morning or late in the evening. The reason why we do this in the morning also is that so that they get to adapt to the environmental conditions before they start their activity. So once we release this on the, on the maze, the parasitoids start moving around looking for the fall armyworm eggs so that they can kill the eggs. Okay? So the fall armyworm eggs produce some smell that attracts, attracts these female parasitoids. Yes. Oh. So they move around the field. So they, they know where to go. Yes. That's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> okay, Julius. So it means you do annually. Once you plant, you do the same. No, not annually. For the, sub, the following seasons, the parasitoids will have established in the, that locality, on that farm. Yes. So we don't need to add every season, mm -hmm. provided the farmer does not use harmful chemicals that are harmful to the parasitoid. Mm -hmm. yes. You will need six parasitoid cards per acre. That's equal to around 60,000 parasitoids. Scout your farm for fall armyworm eggs or the female moth. Once you found the eggs, place the card in a piece of paper and attach it to your maze. Spread the cards equally around your field. It is best to do this in the morning or evening and make sure it's not raining. Once you have released the parasitoids, be careful not to spray with pesticides that will harm them. If you do this, the population should keep growing and win over the fall armyworm pest. Parasitoids are still being developed and they'll be available to farmers in the year 2023. I'm holding an umbrella because it might rain. And I'm holding an umbrella because it's too hot. What's your weather like? Let's check it out on the weather forecast. Welcome to the Shamba Shepherd Farming News for Kenya. In the coming week, we expect moderate to heavy amount of rainfall across most parts of Kenya. North, 
Northeastern, Upper Eastern Kenya including Marsabit, Isiolo, Mandera, Wajia and Garissa will receive rainfall ranging from 5 to 50 mm, with Samburu and some parts of neighboring counties getting moderate to very high amount of rainfall ranging from 25 to 370 mm. Lower Eastern and Mount Kenya regions such as Meru, Tharaka, Machakos, Makueni and Kitui will also see very high rainfall of up to 370 mm. We expect moderate to high rainfall ranging from 25 to 75 mm in the coastal region from Tana River, Lamu, Kilifi, Mombasa to Kwale. Some parts of Taita Taveta and Kajiado and neighboring Mount Kilimanjaro will get rainfall ranging from 75 to as high as 370 mm. Central region counties such as Laikipia, Nyandarwa, Nyeri and Embu as well as Nairobi and Kiambu expect very high rainfall of up to 370 mm. Most parts of North Rift, Central Rift and South Rift Valley will get very high rainfall of up to 370 mm. This includes West Pokot, West Ngishu, Nakuru and Bomet. However, parts of Trukana will receive only little to moderate amount of rainfall ranging from 15 to 50 mm. Western and Nyanza regions also expect very high rainfall of up to 370 mm. This includes Bungoma, Busia, Kakamega, Kisumu, Nyamira and Miguri. Farmers if you are in eastern and central Kenya, scout for pests and diseases and control them as soon as possible. The main pests to watch out for are stemboras and armyworms. Plant trees during this rainy season. You can plant them across the slope to help control soil erosion or along the farm boundaries. Remember, this is the best time to top dress for the grass such as napia. For more information, get in touch with I Shamba on 0711 I am Brenda. See you next week on the Shamba Shape Up Farming News for Kenya. Before I go on to the next story, let's see the cow shed progress. Oh, it's looking really good. The roof now has a proper cover so that the cows keep dry and the floor has been leveled nicely. So it should be easy to clean and the cows will keep healthy. Julius suffered a loss last season and luckily he had taken out an insurance cover for his maze. We want to find out when and why he took it, what he insured against and how he claimed for his payment. We've invited Jean from Acre Africa to help us with all these questions. So, Jean, yes. what is crop insurance? So, crop insurance is basically a cover that a farmer takes against crop risks or farming risks. At Eka Africa, we have what we call index-based crop insurance, and this one covers a farmer against weather-related risks, which is excess rainfall or minimal rainfall, which is drought. Right. So, uh, Julius, yes. what did you insure your crops against? I insured against the rainfall and the, the drought. Rainfall and the drought. Uh, yeah. So w what exactly happened? When the maize has already started tussling, mm -hmm. they came very heavily. As when they feed the officers, mm -hmm. they just see from the from the satellite. They didn't need to come to your shamba physically. They needed to come to the shamba physically. Mm -hmm. So when the, it has rained, a lot of rain, they know such areas has been affected because they see the that picture on their satellite. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they, how, how much percentage did they pay you? They paid me 20%. 20%? Yeah. Only 20% of Julius's maize was affected, and that's why he received 20% compensation. Ah, Jean, you people are behaving like Big Brother Africa. You see things. Huh? You people just see things. Yes, uh, we use uh, technology. So we incorporate satellite data. Uh, and also use uh, pictures, as he says, there's an agent who would frequent uh, his farm and take periodic pictures mm -hmm. of the crop cycle. And then we also have automated uh, weather stations in different parts of the different counties. So we incorporate data from the satellite, from the uh, images we take on ground, and also from the automated weather stations, so as to come up with an accurate loss for the farmers. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Julius, yes. why do you think uh, people should take insurance? The benefit I got, I got that amount, it insist me to take up the next season mm -hmm. to buy the seedling. Mm -hmm. So how the 
uh, compensation happens is that uh, when a farmer is affected by a risk, then uh, we, are, we are able to monitor and see the percentage of loss and then we are able to compensate them within that percentage. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what steps were you required to follow? I can't forget they have officers in the, in the insurers on the ground. Mm -hmm. You request them to come and go have conversation with them. Then you are a chance to teach it all. Ah, nice. Yeah. Okay. So, Jean, um, maybe if you could uh, emphasize on that, if at all maybe a farmer has decided they want to take the crop insurance, what are the steps? So, uh, we have several agents. We call them uh, farmer champions. Mm -hmm. They are in different parts of the different counties that we work with. So, these officers will visit farms and talk to the farmers, educate the farmers about uh, what crop insurance is and how much the premiums are. Uh, we have different categories of premiums, starting from as low as 50 shillings all the way to 1,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. This is to enable the farmers to be able to afford. Uh, and therefore, when a farmer is ready and willing, the field agent or the officer will be able to onboard them using uh, a mobile app. They'll take the size of the farm, the crop they plant, and how he will pay for insurance will be through digital uh, processes like mobile money transfer processes. Mm -hmm. And therefore the farmer does not have to fill any paperwork. The farmer does not have to come to our offices at ECA. All right. Yes. So Julius, yes. how long did you take before you were paid? It took me only three months. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, we also train these farmers wow. and we train them on good agronomic practices because insurance does not mean neglect, neglecting your farm, mm -hmm. then depending on the insurer to compensate you. Mm -hmm. So our farmers are well informed of how insurance is just one of the mitigations but should be integrated with all these other mitigations of good agronomic practices. Thank you very much, Jean. Thank you very much, Julius. Yes, that was you. quite an insightful session. Thank you. I actually feel so learned now. Thank you. Yes. Point to note, always know which insurance cover you're taking and make sure to read the terms and conditions before you sign anything. What I have experienced from Shepap, Shep the broad for us new technology, I'll spread my knowledge which I've been given by Shepap Shep to spread to other farmers to, to benefit. If I follow that uh, lineup, they, do, they assured me, I think I will be staple, a staple mother from now. Hey, nice one. So, Mama Mary, yes. are you promising that now you're going to be keeping more savings? Yes, madam. Mm -hmm. I will do it. All mm -hmm. right. Right from tomorrow. Ah, <laughs> nice, 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 nice. Julius, nice. good luck with your maze. Thank you. I hope you have learned a lot. I've learned a lot. <laughs> and you, Mary? Yeah, even me. Uh -huh. uh, I've also learned something today that Caro here can make very good ugali. Oh, yes. Yes, let's clap, clap for, for her a bit. <laughs> Yeah, she deserves it, she deserves it, she deserves it. <laughs> Our work here is done and we'll see you in the next... Shamba Shamba! Shamba.